You may have heard that the hacker known as Pom Pom Purin, who was the founder and head admin of Breach Forums, was arrested by the FBI in New York last week on one count of conspiracy to solicit individuals with the purpose of selling unauthorized device access, which is basically Fed speak for saying that this guy was running a forum where people could sell hack databases. And Pom himself even acted as a middleman for a lot of those transactions since I guess it's kind of difficult to sell information to people directly. But now we have copies of court papers pertaining to Pom Pom Pern's charges that tell us exactly how he got caught. And we're gonna take a look at what he could have done better to not be in FBI custody right now. Now for a little bit of background, Palm created breach forums shortly after raid forums, another place where hackers could have gone and sold their databases, was seized by the FBI. The feds managed to get full access to the database of this forum after they compromised it. So at that point, they were able to see all of the information that members of this forum used when they signed up, their names, their email addresses, every post that they made on the forum, as well as all of their DMs on the forum. Now, Pom Pom Purin was a member of raid forums for some time, and he had some notoriety here. He even had direct conversations with Omnipotent, the founder and owner of Raid Forums, which is where we're going to see the first OPSEC mistakes that Palm made. So this is a copy of the conversation that Palm had with Omnipotent back on November the 28th of 2020 about a recent data breach of the popular Android keyboard app AI.type. And that particular data breach had resulted in the names, phone numbers, and email addresses of the app's 31 million users getting leaked to the public because of a mistake that the developer made. So their conversation goes like this. Hello, I'm sorry to bother you with this, but I noticed recently that the AI.type data breach post doesn't seem to include every user, at least to my understanding. Looking up one of my old emails on Have I Been Pwned, I come up as in it, but I cannot locate myself in the file provided at, and this is the file containing everyone's info. It seems that maybe it is only a partial amount of data from it. I was under the impression that it was the full amount of data from looking at the thread, as I didn't see any mention of it only being some of the data from the breach. Not messaging to ask for credits back or anything, and credits are what they use in the forum in order to purchase these data breaches. Because I wanted it anyways, I just wanted to let you know that it doesn't seem to be the full amount of data and that the thread doesn't seem to communicate that it isn't the full one. Thanks, winky face. And then this is a response from Omnipotent. What email did you look up and how? Pom Pom Pern responded, apologies for late reply. Here is another email that I found to be present on Have I Been Pwned, but not inside of the file provided on the thread. I don't want to share my actual email for obvious reasons, but this email seems to have the same case as mine. Connor Fitzpatrick 2 at gmail.com. And then here we have a link to where he's um, basically showing us the screenshot of Connor Fitzpatrick O2 and gmail.com showing that it does show up in a couple of different data breaches. And then he explains how he's searching the file locally on his computer using the grep command. And he's saying that to make sure the command is working correctly, I made a test.txt file, including the email address I'm trying to search in the same format as the data in the breach. And then he runs the same command and it works on his test.txt, but not uh, the original one. And then I think this is a screenshot of him. Yeah, so this is a screenshot of him trying to do those grep commands to find the data on his local computer. Now you probably guessed correctly that Connor Fitzpatrick 2 at gmail.com is Pom Pom Pern's real email address. But you didn't even have to guess because at the top of the affidavit, we've got his name right here. United States of America versus Connor Brian Fitzpatrick, AKA Pom Pom Pern, the defendant. So obviously the email address, first name, last name, and year of his birth at gmail.com 
is gonna be his personal email. And this was also connected to his personal Google Pay account, which also had his personal Visa card listed on there. Now, of course, Connor didn't want Omnipotent to think that this was his real email, and Omnipotent probably didn't think it was at the time, but of course, later on, the FBI agents reading this would figure out the truth. Now, it's not an uncommon thing for hackers, or really anyone that has a little bit of cybersecurity knowledge to try and find themselves in a leaked database or on haveibeenpwned.com. In fact, that's the whole reason that that service was created. It can easily let you search through 12 billion email and phone records from hundreds of different database leaks that have happened over the years so that you can very quickly see if your information shows up in any of them. And we see that this is the correlation Palm was making to say that the database leak was incomplete. But if you think about this for a moment, the ability to come up with a random email address that you have no connection to that's part of the whole database leak but not part of this partial database leak, that would be like finding a needle in a haystack. It's very, very unlikely that any email you're gonna be able to pull out is not one that you have some association with. Now, a couple of months prior to this conversation that Pom Pom Pern had with Omnipotent, he had created the email address Connor Fitzpatrick 2002 at gmail.com in order to replace that older email address that had been pwned in some databases. And again, this new personal email address was linked to his Google Pay account, which has his full name and home address on it. And that Google Pay account was tied to his Visa card ending in 3068. Again, full name and home address is associated with that. And the account was tied to two of his personal cell phones, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, IMEI ending in 5342, and an iPhone 7 Plus, IMEI ending in 9371. Both of these phones had been tied to Connor's personal Verizon phone number ending in 3144, and it even looks like both of these phones at one point in time had used the same SIM card with the IMSI ending in 6028. Now, the reason that I'm talking so much about his phones is according to IP records, Connor had apparently used these phones at least nine times to access his Pom Pom Purin account on raid forums in 2021. So that right there is an unbreakable chain linking Connor's personal life to his hacker man life. But it doesn't stop there, you guys. The recovery email for Connor Fitzpatrick 2002 at gmail.com was funmc59tm at gmail.com, which was used to register another account on raid forums with the name AA. And when the feds traced the registration of this AA account back to the IP address, they found that they were using the 74.101.151.4 IP. Then when they go and pull the records from Verizon, they see that it was registered to a customer with the last name Fitzpatrick at the union premises with a telephone number ending in 2956. And the email address that's associated with the same person's public employment, but this wasn't actually uh, Connor Fitzpatrick, the son, this was Connor Fitzpatrick, the father. So this is when he was using his dad's internet connection, uh, where he was probably just living with his dad, because again, this kid was like 20 when he got arrested. So he's living with his dad, creating Hacker Man accounts, on his dad's bare IP address, not covering him with a VPN or Tor or anything like that. But wait, there's even more links. Records received from Google concerning Connor Fitzpatrick 2002 at gmail.com also showed logins from numerous virtual private network provider companies from at least on or about September 20th, 2021 through on or about May 12th, 2022. And then we get a long list 
of all of these different VPNs that he was using. So it looks like around 2021, towards the end of 2021, Connor finally figured out what a VPN was. And I have a feeling that he might have learned how VPNs work from one of the many influencers that shilled them on YouTube saying that, oh, they're gonna make you so heckin' secure and anonymous because they don't keep logs. <laughs> but you know, the feds really don't even have to subpoena the VPN company. They don't have to hack them or capture traffic, go and plug in some black boxes into a closet somewhere to find you. When you use the same fucking IP address for the VPN server to log into your personal Gmail, and then the next day you go and log into your Hackerman account. For instance, on or about March 7th, 2022, records received from Google show that the Connor Fitzpatrick 2002 at gmail.com Google account was accessed from IP address 89.187.181.117 on or about March 7th, 2022. This was owned by Data Camp Limited. However, a query of this IP address on spur.us in turn revealed that this IP address was actually used by the VPN provider iVPN at the time. Then, according to records from Zoom, that same IP address was used the following day on or about March 8th, 2022 to log into a Zoom account under the name of Pom Pom Perrin, which was an email address of, or with an email address of Pom Pom Perrin at riseup.net. The Pom Pom Perrin at riseup.net email address is notable because at the time of Zoom's accounts creations, it also served as Pom Pom Perrin's registration email on raid forums per records obtained by the FBI in that investigation. I mean, come on, dude. Don't you think even the dumbest FBI agent on the planet can figure out that two different accounts being accessed less than a day apart from the same VPN server belongs to the same person? <laughs> you see, this is how people get caught. The feds rarely end up using these advanced techniques like backdoored applications or backdoored CPUs or any of that crazy stuff that you hear people talking about the three letter agencies being able to do. It's always the low hanging fruit <laughs> that seems to get these guys caught up. And I find it really funny how hackers, you know, people that you would think know more about OPSEC than any other criminal under the sun are making the same kind of dumb mistakes that these gangsters in the Bronx that got Ricoed were making. Basically, these guys that I was just watching this Trap Geek video about were killing their ops, getting seen on camera, because there's more cameras in New York than there are streetlights, and then they would brag about the murders on Instagram Live. And that same person would later on be featured in a music video that millions of people watch talking about killing their ops. And I think in one of the cases, this dude was wearing a pair of unreleased Jordans. He killed a dude. And then later on, he's in an Instagram Live wearing that same pair of unreleased Jordans. <laughs> And of course, they're gonna see you on camera. There's, there's more cameras in New York than there are street lights. I mean, there's comedy bits about how dumb these street kids are when it comes to their OPSEC. And you know, they're both from New York. Pom Pom Perrin's from like Pesekill, New York or something like that. And obviously these kids are from the Bronx. And despite being from New York, it seems like neither one of them have heard of Biggie's 10 Crack Commandments, basically an OPSEC guide for selling rocks. But the way I see it, if Palm had followed rule seven and kept his real life and business completely separated, maybe get a different phone for all of his hacker man activities. Uh, and if he wouldn't have pulled this dumb stunt in his DMs where he's like, oh yeah, Connor Fitzpatrick 02 is totally not my real email. If he hadn't done that, then Palm probably would not be sitting with the feds right now. So since we know that Pom Pom Pern's personal OPSEC was garbage, it's got a lot of people asking, how good was his OPSEC when he was running Breach forums? Well, we've been getting updates from Baphomet, who has taken over Breached after Palm's arrest. And on March the 24th, Baphomet posted a message stating that the FBI did indeed have access to Breach Forum's SQL database. And this is further confirmed 
from part 69 of the affidavit, which mentions the feds using IP information obtained from Breach Forum's SQL database to confirm yet another link between Connor's real identity and his hacker man persona since he used the same IP to log in as Pom Pom Perrin that he did to back up stuff to his personal iCloud. So we're probably gonna start seeing a cascading effect in the coming months and years of other hackers who had OPSEC similarly as bad as Pom Pom Perrin's getting arrested in the exact same way because breach forums was pretty much just a clone of raid forums in terms of its look and feel at least so i really wouldn't be surprised if these databases containing dms and all kinds of other crumbs are going to lead the feds right to these hackers apartments now baphomet is continuing to take his time with redeploying the community or something similar and I'd have to imagine that he's shitting bricks, but we'll just have to see in the coming months and years if his OPSEC is really as solid as he says it is.